Welcome to Going Carnivore in Thailand. Today's Sunday, and over here it's Sunday. And in my home country, the United States, some idiot tried to assassinate Donald Trump. Thankfully, thank the Lord, I guess, the guy was a bad shot. He hit Donald Trump in the side of the ear and head, but evidently it grazed him and didn't go inside. Just, it hurt though. And there's all kinds of repercussions that can come from that. Concussion, all kinds of things. But unbelievably, Trump got up after being knocked down and held his fist up in the air even after the assassin who's been killed by the Secret Service uh, lay dead on a rooftop. And he was in Butler, Pennsylvania. Not a big place, but looked like thousands of people turned out to see him. And you know what disappoints me more than anything? Current President Biden got on TV and said he was, there's no place for violence in this country. In the political aspect, no place for violence and said a few stupid words. But what he didn't say was, I've already directed Secret Service to quadruple the coverage they have on Donald Trump. In addition, I've decided to initiate special service or secret service coverage on Robert Kennedy Jr. Because America's a powder keg. Flat out. It's a divided country that it wouldn't take much for it to start looking like France and Belgium, and places where they are protesting in the streets and they're real unhappy about it. And it, I know the Democrats want to maintain power, more power to them. I mean, that's what everybody in politics want to do. They want to get reelected. But the fact that Robert Kennedy Jr., whose uncle, John F. Kennedy, was assassinated while in office, and his father, Robert Kennedy, was assassinated running for office, basically. And he's been out there, and he, he let me tell you, he's going he's gonna to do well in this election. He's going to end up with, with more than a sizable percentage of votes. When H. Ross Perot ran, and he said there's going to be this giant sucking sound of jobs leaving the United States, he was right. NAFTA created the, the best conditions in Canada and Mexico and the worst conditions in the United States. That was horrible legislation. Ross Perot got 19% of the vote. But Biden won't authorize Secret Service protection for Robert Kennedy Jr. They should. And he should offer quadruple security, four times the security for Trump while he's in this presidential race and he authorize the same level of security for Robert Kennedy Jr. Our country can't stand. The United States could not stand an assassination. Trump survived. I'd hate to think what this country would look like tomorrow had Trump been assassinated. I'd hate to think about it.
It's just wrong. So with that, while you're having a nice steak today, think about the fact that, you know, I left America. I'm not going to vote in this year's election. I'm not going to be there. And I'm not casting about a ballot from over here. You know, I'm just one guy who's trying to d dish out some good karma. I hope that we can get a new leadership to turn this country around. If I had my way, neither Trump nor Biden would be on the ticket. We need new blood. We'll let it go from there. But we need new blood, younger blood, people who've got a stake. Hell, over Trump or Biden, anybody who has an IQ above 130 in the country could be put in a hat as far as I'm concerned. If you got an IQ tested above 130, they could put them all in a big hat and draw out a lucky name and make them president and be better than what we got right now. At least they'd probably be able to string a sentence together. We need new blood and we're not going to get it. Many of you heard my story about how Jan was a delegate to the Democratic National Convention and she left after the first day because she found out how corrupt it was, became disillusioned with the Democratic Party, but never turned Republican. She just never gave him any time or money ever again because she said it was corrupt. That was in 1988. You think it's got any less corrupt now? No. And the Republicans aren't a damn bit better. On a scale of one to 10, both of them are struggling to get up to that one level. Poor, poor, poor us. Which is the reason why I am here in beautiful Thailand at about eight o'clock in the morning in my pool doing my stretching and exercising and generally just enjoying life because I realize that you can, you can stand and fight and have no effect whatsoever, or you can go where you're treated best. So God bless Do Donald J. Trump that he survived. And I thank the Lord that the country does didn't end up in, in civil conflict because if he gets assassinated, you think shit ain't going to hit the fan, you're wrong. I mean, I'm not advocating it, but I predict it that there would be serious consequences. So, Joe Biden, if you watch my uh, podcast here, quadruple the Secret Service protection for Donald J. Trump and give some protection to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. And uh, let the election go the way the election wants to go. Because... If you want to have a country to run, you better keep them alive. Both of them. Just saying. Just saying. Time for dirty tricks has ended. I don't know how long the American public is going to stomach it. If you're unhappy with America, I will say there's a lot of places in the world that will treat you pretty damn good. Thailand being one of them, but 
pick your own. Hell, Mexico's a nice place, and it's close to America. St. Lucia's a nice place. It's close to America. Panama, Philippines, Malaysia, Indonesia. All beautiful places with beautiful weather. I mean, you know, the weather in Tha Thailand is just off the charts good. I mean, I don't know what the hell I was doing hanging in Cincinnati for as many years as I hung in Cincinnati. Cincinnati weather, that's just a shame compared to this, where you can come out in the pool 365 days a year, you can be in a pool. Wonderful. It's absolutely wonderful. So, going carnivore in Thailand, what I have for dinner. Well, last night was a ribeye. The night before last, though, Noi got these steaks off of this big ass fish. I have to get back a little where you could see this. I mean, yeah, this fish was like two foot long and she called it, she gave it the name that they call it here and the translator app called it an eagle fish. Got big teeth, looks sort of like a walleye or something. I don't know, it, it comes out of the ocean but they cut steaks out of it, like salmon steaks or tuna steaks. And they cut a couple steaks about that big, and about that thick. Only had bones in one little section that had little curved bones, like little rib bones. The rest of it didn't have any. And she grilled it up, and uh, damn, it was delicious. And, of course, you know, eating a little fish once in a while gets you a little bit of some of the omega-3 fatty acids that you need and so forth. So, doing what I can. Am I setting the world on fire? Probably not. But I got energy, I got health, and I'm, lo I'm a lucky man. So, God bless everybody out there, and y'all have a great day. And that's the end.